Jamaica Cause was established in June 2014 as a church-led civil society movement standing for the natural family, faith, and fundamental freedoms. Our first public event was the June 29, 2014 rally in Halfway Tree, which culminated in a six, or rather, which culminated a six-week-long silent protest outside of the gates of the University of the West Indies. We believe this was a historic event in Jamaica's history. A clear signal was sent across the world that the Jamaican church was alert to advancing threats against our national sovereignty and constitutional freedoms. Local and international political bodies took note of the church's reawakening engagement in the government of this country. A second smaller rally was held in Montego Bay. A year on, and recent legal developments in the United States, the visit to Jamaica of President Obama, followed by the secret visit of his special envoy for LGBT rights, demonstrate the continuing and increasing pressure on our nation to accept norms which are foreign to both our laws and our culture. This is therefore an important moment for Jamaica to take a decisive stand for a definition of family and a pattern of family or family life that enhances human flourishing. We are suffering from social, spiritual, and economic effects of faulty family. And there is much to be done to address oppression and injustice. But despite our economic, political, and social challenges, we will not accept new de definitions of marriage and family that defy nature and design and will lead the country towards predictable negative outcomes. The theme for our rally for this year is defending family, faith, and freedom. With respect to family, we affirm that the ideal family begins with the monogamous faithful union of one man and one woman. With respect to faith and freedom, we affirm the importance of family freedoms, constitutional freedoms, in particular freedom of conscience, expression, and religious liberty as integral to preserving free and fair democratic society. We must preserve the freedom to promote and facilitate the ideal form and functions of the family according to the biblical standards. Our message is very simple. Let me put it in four concise statements. Firstly, we reject all forms of pressure or coercion, internal or external. Secondly, we stand opposed to all policies that harm marriage, family, and children. Thirdly, we urge our leaders to protect the Jamaican family, which is already gravely threatened. And finally, we call the nation to repentance. We have not done family well in Jamaica. The evidence is constantly before us, and we have to hold ourselves accountable to our failings. The nation must repent for disregarding the beauty of marriage, and sanctity of sex, and how disrespecting these have contributed to destabilizing family, communities, and society. The redemption of our society must begin with the redemption of the family, for this is the best way in which Jamaica will achieve Vision 2030, the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. The rally this year is to take place on Sunday, September 27, and it will begin at 5 p.m. in Halfway Tree. We are calling on all Jamaicans, all Jamaicans from all walks of life who share our concern and want to publicly demonstrate their support for preserving traditional definitions of family and marriage to come 
out in their numbers. We're looking for you, Jamaica. We want all Jamaica to be present. We're asking church leaders to mobilize their congregations to attend. Close the church doors on Sunday evening. Hire buses and let's roll into Halfway Tree. This is going to be a significant event in the history and in the life of this country. This year, we're particularly pleased that representatives from our fellow Caribbean countries or territories will also be attending the rally. So far, confirmed are colleagues from Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, and Guyana. Other countries include Antigua, Barbu Antigua and Barbuda, rather, Belize, Haiti, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, and St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. They have expressed their support and commitment to this cause. They have appreciated that the concerns named are not unique to Jamaica, but affect and threaten the entire region. Jamaica cause is encouraged that others in the Caribbean and the world stand ready to join with us in a common regional defense of family, faith, and freedom. Good morning, friends and colleagues. I'm Helene Coley Nicholson. I'm the president of the Lawyers Christian Fellowship. I'd like to begin with a quote. An individual who breaks a law that conscience tells him is unjust and who willingly accepts the penalty of imprisonment in order to arouse the conscience of the community over its injustice is in reality expressing the highest respect for the law. So said Martin Luther King Jr., who also asserted, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. The case of Kim Davis, the county clerk in Rowan County, Kentucky, who was recently jailed after refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples, puts into sharp focus some of the consequences of the unfolding LGBT agenda. Her imprisonment is the direct consequence of the overthrowing of laws by the U.S. Supreme Court, which legalized same-sex marriage in all 50 states in June this year. That ruling has unleashed political and legal battles over concepts of family, religious liberty, and freedom of conscience, human rights guaranteed under international law as well as the Jamaican Constitution. As the battle rages, what happened to Kim Davis has sent a signal not just to dissenters in the United States, but to those in other countries, including Jamaica, that are within the sphere of American influence. Earlier this year in May, the U.S. sent its LGBT special envoy, Randy Berry, to Jamaica. His boss, Secretary of State John Kerry, said that the United States is committed to advancing LGBT rights globally. Mr. Kerry described their mission as the heart and conscience of his country's diplomacy. Intense pressure has been and is being put on Jamaica by the United States and other countries to overturn our buggery laws and enact legislation to offer special rights to LGBT persons. Against that background, it will surprise many to hear that marriage is actually defined in international law as well as the Jamaican Constitution as an institution involving one man and one woman. Article 16 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is accepted by the over 190 countries of the UN, states, and I quote, that men and women of full age without any limitation due to race, nationality, or religion have the right to marry and to found a family. Article 16 goes on to state that the family is the natural and fundamental group unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state. In Jamaican law, section 18, subsection two of the 2011 Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms states, 
no form of marriage or other relationship other than the voluntary union of one man and one woman may be contracted or legally recognized in Jamaica. So what is the importance of the Bogri law in maintaining family as one man and one woman, you may ask? It has been said that the purpose of decriminalizing Bogri is to reorganize society so that all sexual expression is free and then to punish those who say otherwise. LGBTQIAA+, that is lesbian, gay, bisexual, pansexual, transgender, transsexual, queer, questioning, intersex, intergender, asexual, ally, plus others, deem it imperative to get rid of the Bogri law because as long as boggery is illegal, it is unlikely to be regarded as normal. It also means there can never be same-sex marriage. You can therefore see that keeping the boggery laws keep the door closed on same-sex marriage. I wish to draw your attention to section 1312 of the Constitution, which contains what is called the Savings Clause. The section states, among other things, quote, nothing contained in or done under the authority of any law in force immediately before the commencement of the Charter of Fundamental Rights in 2011 relating to sexual offenses shall be held to be inconsistent with or in contravention of the provisions of this chapter. I'll break it down. In other words, the Bogri laws which were in force before 2011 cannot be challenged as long as those laws are not amended by Parliament. If they are amended, they may be deemed to be new law and therefore open to challenge by homosexuals and others who wish to practice or support buggery. As it concerns freedom of thought, conscience and religion, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states at Article 18 that everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. Section 17 of the Jamaican Constitution protects freedom of religion and employs similar language to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It is my view that this law breaches local and international norms and moral principles. There are times when in order to do the right thing morally, laws must be broken. Consider Nazi Germany, apartheid South Africa, and the transatlantic slave trade. The international community has long recognized the possibility of immoral laws and the duty of citizens to disobey. In 1959, a self-governing British colony Jamaica became the first country after India to declare a boycott against apartheid South Africa. One campaign slogan was, don't buy slavery, don't buy South African. Many years later, Nelson Mandela walked to freedom and embraced the Jamaican people as friends. It was civil disobedience that won him and millions of South Africans their rights. I encourage Jamaicans, including Christians, to vote with their feet on Sunday, September 27. Come out to Halfway Tree. Come defend our laws which preserve family, faith, and freedom. Come encourage the rest of the Caribbean and other countries to take a stand. Come so that Jamaica may play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. My name is uh Dr. Wayne West, and I'm the chairman of the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society. Just want to frame my comments in the context that uh, Jamaica is not a secular society. I think it's something that we need to say uh, up front and to say clearly. A secular society is one which rejects the input of religion in any aspect of public policy. Jamaica has never made any such declaration. Uh, Jamaica, continuing with the tradition from the British heritage, is a plural society in that there are many ideologies within Jamaica, uh, but the dominant worldview for public policy and law is the Judeo-Christian worldview, and it remains so today. 
as um, can be seen in the national anthem and Jamaica's pledge. Uh, the issue surrounding Kim Davis' refusal to sign the certificates for same-sex marriage in the United States, they bring into sharp uh, perspective, stark perspective, the effects of worldviews on law. Now, the United States, unlike Jamaica, has declared itself to be a secular society, so transcendent principles and religion and God has no role presently uh, in the thinking of American policymakers and those who make their laws. The point to be made, however, is that um, in the context of secularism, which is supposed to be the separation of religion from public policy, what one up gets, in effect, is atheism. Atheism. So public policy is informed by atheism. And the question is, what then, or who then, is the agent for the formation of public laws? And I would put it to you that in the context of atheism, secularism, atheism, I think they should be always be held together in the present day context. Uh, the, the individual or the group who is responsible for law and who determines law are the elite. And these are the elite of the academy, that is universities and colleges, as well as industry and politics. It is their desires that now determine what is to be law. And you will find that contrary to the, 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 the recommendation by Aristotle some 3,000 years ago, that law be pure reason, free of desire, uh, presently with this new construct of law being the expression of the desires of the elite, law is becoming pure desire, free of reason. And we can see that in the decision by the United States Supreme Court. The court argued that uh, Lovin, the case of Lovin, which was a case of an interracial couple, uh, reflected their decision or caused them to make the decision for same-sex marriage. But uh, it's totally logical in that loving involved a normal man and a normal woman. And what obtained in that situation is that the state brought a social construct of racial prejudice to restrict that natural union, which is present in the design in the universe. Uh, the same-sex marriage, quote-unquote, on the other hand, does no such thing. Same-sex marriage is now the state bringing what is not part of design in the universe and defining it as marriage. So this, the present Supreme Court ruling has gotten it all wrong because it is driven by desire and it is absolutely free of any reason. The fact is that secularism, atheism is not a neutral in terms of its, it's not neutral in terms of its moral position. In fact, it is essentially nihilistic and anarchist. And what do we mean by that? And by nihilistic, it means that uh, in terms of interpersonal relationship, all interpersonal relationships are equally valid. And in terms of behavior, there is no abnormal intimate behavior. So we need to keep that, that, ex that consideration in mind, that secular states are being driven by a morally nihilistic and sexually anarchist philosophy for their public policy. The question is, do we want that? But what happened to Kim Davis is that her Judeo-Christian, much more logical Judeo-Christian, uh, value system conflicts with that morally nihilistic and sexually anarchist policy for intimate behavior. And so she ended up in prison. And I dare say that if we were to allow the United States to impose that on us as our norms, we too will find that persons who uh, follow the design in the universe and the logical part for interpersonal relationship will end up in prison. The thing about it is that Atheism, secularism, although it claims to represent the well-being of all human beings free of imposition of religion, actually turns out to be a type of fascism in that it reflects the desires of an elite. And one has to be careful that if we don't resist this, this uh, type of fascism, we will end up in years to come with a sort of totalitarian state, uh, which we would, I'm sure none of us would like to have. So in light of what history has told us about laws being formed by human desire free of reason and public policy being formed by human desire free of reason, we would like to invite all of Jamaica to come to uh, Halfway Tree to, to advocate that our government recognize the significant role that the heterosexual monogamous 
uh, binary family has played in human development. The gathering Ignite Kingston, October 15 to 17, 2015. Come experience the move of God in the earth today. The heavens are pregnant and God is getting ready to move. It is time to see the heavenness so that the reign of the Spirit is released. Join conference host Prophetess Mary Wilde Reese, Apostle Vivian Duncan, and Apostle Carlos Jimenez. We're calling the remnants in this nation, all leaders, all intercessors, all prophets, all those who are concerned for the nation and are hungry for a fresh move of God. We're calling you together. Thursday, October 15, 7 p.m. Friday, October 16, 10 a.m. Pastors and Leadership Session. Come back at 7 p.m. for powerful impartation and activation in the spirit. Saturday, October 17, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. In this final move, God is raising up an apostolic and prophetic people who will manifest His kingdom authority to equip and empower believers to be carriers of this move. Admission free. You don't want to miss this. The Gathering Ignite Kingston, Courtney Auditorium, 28 St. Lucia Avenue, Kingston. Register online at www.trumpetcallministries.org or call 971-1772. Ignite Kingston. Be there.